So here's a situation that sometimes course developers want to set up. I've got this course and in the menu over here at the side, you can see I've got some content at the beginning where I've got a few slides and then I have a quiz and then I have some content that comes after the quiz. And the situation is I want users to be able to jump around in this content before the quiz at will, or even if they want to skip directly to the quiz. But I don't want them to be able to move on to the stuff that comes after the quiz until they've passed the quiz. Now, one solution that kind of works is to set the player's navigation to restricted, and that's going to require everybody to go through the course in a linear order. But the problem with that is you can't jump around. You can't, you know, hit these slide titles in the sidebar to jump around among these content slides at the beginning. Really, you have to go through in a very linear order. So here's a different way that you can set things up so that learners can explore that content before the quiz, but they can't move on to the content after the quiz until they've passed it. So what I did, if we come over here to our variables, I'm going to click on this little X and open up our project variables. I created a simple true false variable. And what we're seeing in this list here is mostly a bunch of variables that Storyline created for us to manage the scoring on our quiz. But the one that I created is right up here at the top. It's called quiz passed. And you can create your own variables by clicking on this little button in the lower left here. Let me just open this up so we can see what this is about. I named it quiz passed because we, you know, want to monitor whether the learner has passed the quiz or not. And I used a true false variable and I set the initial value to false because when the learner first launches the course, they haven't passed it yet. And so this variable is going to stay false until I tell Storyline to change it. And the place that I change it is on my results slide if the learner passes. So let's go ahead and jump over to our results slide and take a look at that. The way that results work in Storyline is when the learner gets to the results slide, they're going to see either a success layer or a failure layer, depending on how they scored. And on the success layer, what I did is I added a simple little trigger right here that changes my quiz passed variable to true. So if we open this up, here's what's happening. We're saying adjust the variable called quiz passed, make it equal to a value of true when the timeline starts on this particular layer. So the logic here is that if the learner makes it to this slide and sees this success layer, that means that they passed. And so then I know that it's okay to change my variable to true. And the cool thing is I can use that variable to control whether learners can get to the content that comes after my quiz. And here's how I did that. Um, if we come up here to view and then slide master, I really have just two layouts that I'm using for my content. I've got this one right here. Um, this is just a regular old content layout that I didn't do anything to, but I changed you know, the background. That's all I did. And then I made a duplicate of that layout. And this is the one I used for all the content that comes after my quiz. And I did a couple of things on this layout to make everything work. Down here in the layer panel, I created a layer that says, oops, you can't view this part because you haven't passed the quiz yet. And then I have a button right here that just takes them back to whatever slide they were viewing previously. And on my base layer, I have this simple little trigger. If we open this up, what's happening is I'm telling Storyline to show that layer that I created that restricts them when the timeline starts on this slide on this condition. If, if we open this up, if the variable called quiz passed is equal to a value of false. So if that variable is still false, when the learner tries to get to a slide that uses this layout, what happens is they're going to see this layer instead of seeing the actual slide. And then um, I did do one other thing. I did rename these two slide masters just so it'd be easier to see which one I'm applying to my slides. So if we hover over this, you can see this one's called pre-quiz layout and this one's called post-quiz layout. And you can rename yours by just right clicking and choosing rename layout. So then if we go back to our content slides and look at one of these slides beforehand and then we use this layout drop down you can see this one's using the pre-quiz layout and then if we scroll down after our quiz all of the slides that come after are using the post quiz layout so if we preview this we'll see how this behaves what's going to happen is we can jump around you know in these three slides that are at the beginning we can even jump to the quiz but if we try to jump to anything else we get this message so everything that comes after the slide were being restricted. Now another thing you could do here also is apply a condition to your next button that prevents the learner from also clicking on that if they haven't passed the quiz. But I didn't do that in this example. It felt like this was clear enough that if the learner, you know, gets that message, they'll know what to do. They'll go ahead and complete the quiz. And now that they've done that, they can move on to the other content.